This painting was an experiment for me in creating effective light and practicing values to create depth. I began blocking in the sky at the top of the canvas and worked my way down to the horizon. The clouds are darkest at the top and are painted lighter in value as they get closer to the ground. Painting a pink highlight under the bottom of each cloud represents the light shining from the setting sun. I painted the leaves of these oak trees very close in color and value to the purple of the sky. This helped create some color harmony and also added distance to the painting because as objects get closer to the horizon, they will lean towards the color of the sky. I used a dagger striper brush to paint the form of the tree trunks and branches. Trees are not made up of straight lines. They bend and twist and curve. The lines of the branches get steadily thinner as they spread out from the trunk. Adding some areas of sky color in the trees creates natural sky holes or places where the sky can be seen through the leaves. While blocking in these pine trees, I focused on the saturation of colors to create distance. The farther away the tree, the less green can be seen and the more the tree takes on colors of the sky. I painted the farthest pine trees a light purple and steadily added more blue and green as I moved forward. Since I was going to add snow on top of the pine trees, I painted the branches slightly downward as if weighed down from snow. Snow will reflect the colors of the sky. For that reason, I blocked in the snow on the ground with a light blue color, moving my brush in the direction I wanted the snow to appear. Snow will not be one solid color. There will be variations of colors and shadows in areas not hit by light. In this block-in stage, I used a darker blue to represent some shadows and planned on adding some more colors to the snow when detailing. I call the first layer of paint I add to the canvas my block-in layer, but really it is the time when I paint whatever information I need for when I complete my detailed pass of the painting. I did a more detailed block-in of the church to make it easier for myself when I added details. I had already sketched out all of the angles, proportions, and perspectives of the building, so when I began blocking in the colors of the sides and front of the church, I was able to really concentrate on which areas would be in shadow and on where my light would be. The top of each stair is lighter than the underside because the light is coming from inside the church. Similarly, the inside of this open door will be cast in light. The front of the steeple is lighter than the side because the side is facing directly away from the light of the sky. I blocked in the snow on the roof with the same light blue color I used on the ground. Then painted a lighter blue highlight along the edge to make it stand out. I added the shadows under the eaves to separate the roof from the side of the church. To show light in the windows, I began by painting orange inside the top of each window, then increased the saturation and lightened the value by adding yellow next to the orange. Then finally, a layer of yellow next to that. Adding colors in a prismatic shift like this creates the effect of light. I created a similar shift from orange to yellow to begin showing the glowing light around the lanterns. I blocked in the pathway and bushes with darker colors so that my highlights would be nicely visible when I detailed them later. Water is an interesting subject to paint because it reflects the colors of everything around it and the ripples create darker shadows of those colors. Using horizontal motions, I started painting the water with the blue and pink colors of the sky. I added a dark gray color under the snowbank to separate the water from the ground. Using my pencil marks as a guide, I blocked in the colors of the bridge and its shadow in the water. I painted the top ledge of the bridge light blue 
to begin painting the snow laying on top of it. I continued blocking in the rest of the blue and pink areas of the water with horizontal brush strokes. Using horizontal movements keeps the water looking flat. The snow banks in the foreground were blocked in with a wider blue than the snow in the background to once again help show distance. Whites get wider and brighter the closer you get to the foreground. The line of gray under the snow helps break up the water and the ground, providing a clear water line. I began the reflection of the church with a slightly darker gray than the church building because reflections will be darker than the original subject. I blocked in areas of yellow where the light from the windows would be reflected. Then I lightly blended the colors together using horizontal motions with a dry blender brush. This helped distort and soften the edges of the reflection. I used an old frayed flat brush to block in the shape of this cluster of bushes. I tapped on some areas of snow to show the top edge of each bush. These large bushes and this large pine tree in the foreground are some of the darkest and greenest areas of the painting. Just like whites appear brighter and whiter closer to the foreground, greens become darker and more green. I block in the shape of the tree, once again painting each branch slightly downward to give the look of being weighed down by snow. With the tree blocked in, I moved on to detailing. I brightened the lighter areas of the sky to better represent light. This included the color near the horizon and the highlights under each cloud. Adding some highlights to the oak trees created a more three-dimensional shape and helped to obscure some of the tree branches to make them look more natural. I reinforced the colors of the pine trees and added some subtle highlights to a few of the closer trees to bring out more detail. I painted snow on the pine trees on the edges of each branch, tapering the snow into a point at the tips of the branches. Just as the colors of the trees changed in saturation, I changed the saturation of the snow mixing more white and blue into the mixture as I moved forward through the trees. As the trees became closer, I added more detail by painting a shadow color of the snow before adding a bright highlight on top. I created the siding on the church by painting thin horizontal lines using three shades of color. I followed the angles of the building to keep my perspective lines correct. To add more detail to the snow on the roof, I tapped on some highlights with the side of my brush and lightly softened them with a clean blender brush, barely touching the canvas. Adding a shadow color under the edge of the snow raised the snow up away from the roof a bit, making it look less flat. I also darkened and painted more shadows under the eaves of the roof. Unlike the sparse, uneven shadows under the snow, Shadows under the eaves should be even and straight, and should follow the angle of the roof. The front siding was painted the same way as the side, but I used lighter colors to reinforce the values I created when blocking in. I straightened the lines of the steeple with the side of a palette knife to correct some slight wiggly lines I had painted with my dagger striper brush. In order to fully project the effect of light in the painting, the light needed to extend past the doors and windows and cast light onto other areas of the painting. To do this, I added yellow highlights to the inside of the door, the tops of the surrounding bushes, the tops of the steps, and on areas of snow around the building. This also included a faint yellow highlight on the edge of the bridge that faces the light. I softened the yellow on the snow using a clean blender brush, just barely touching the canvas using side-to-side -side motions. 
I also lighten the yellow of the reflection in the water to cause it to stand out more, become brighter and more defined. To paint the ice on top of the water near the banks, I painted a blue shadow color of the ice before painting a highlight on top. The small line of dark blue under the bottom edge of the ice helps it appear raised up away from the water. The side of the bridge is made up of randomly placed gray shapes of varying sizes and colors. This was enough to give the impression of individual stones. I applied some thicker, lighter highlights to the snow on top of the bridge and added a few shadows under the snow to give it a three-dimensional look. The footprints in the snow were created with the tip of a dagger striper brush. I painted small specks of shadow in the snow where I wanted a footprint and placed a few small highlights in and around the footprints to represent raised higher areas of snow. This large foreground pine tree needed to be more detailed than the other trees, so I added some light green highlights to allow both highlight and shadow colors to be seen in the tree after I painted the snow on the branches. To show some pink reflecting on the snow from the sky, I added some subtle highlights of pink on the edges of the snowbanks and on top of the snow on the bridge. The pink on the background snow is darker to show distance. The Christmas lights are painted using the same technique as the light in the windows and lanterns. I paint a prismatic shift, starting with the glow around the light bulb, then work my way to the center of the glow with a thick small dot of the brightest color. The red lights shift from a purplish red to a bright red to a reddish orange. The yellow lights shift from orange to yellow to a pale yellow mixed with white for the center bulb. The greens shift from a dark bluish green to a bright green to a yellowish green in the center. I fix the reflection of the Christmas tree by darkening the green color in the water and then applying specks of red, yellow, and green that I gently blended from side to side to soften and distort the reflection. Lastly, I painted the snow on the large foreground tree, starting with a light blue for a shadow color of the snow. Once again, I kept my brush strokes downward and tapered the snow into points at the tips of the branches. Then I added a light, almost pure white highlight color onto the top edge of each snow pile. I hope you enjoyed this Christmas video as much as I enjoyed creating it. May your holidays be blessed and filled with joy. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.